Earlier this week, one of my best friends texted me with such an infectious enthusiasm about this brand new AI thing called ChatGPT. And she was talking about how she really thought it was going to change the industry. And so immediately I went down this two day rabbit hole of researching everything about it. But the first immediate question that I had was, is this like just plagiarism? Like how does it actually work? Is it just copying and pasting different sentences from articles around the internet? Or is it actually creatively writing its own thing? Like what's happening here? And the research uncovered a lot of really fascinating stuff. First, obviously how ChatGPT works right now, but also even more interestingly, how it's probably going to evolve in the future and what it means for different industries like the creative industry, even students, like are students still gonna have to write essays in the future? All these questions kind of were uncovered through the research. And I feel like if you're watching this video, you're probably the person in your friend group that kind of tells everyone about what's going on in the tech world. So in this video, I wanna kind of break down all the things that I learned about ChatGPT because I think that there's actually genuinely a lot to be excited about here but I also think that there's a little bit of nuance to how it actually works. All right, so the beginner's guide first thing about ChatGPT is that it's from a company called OpenAI, which is this research company that's working on a lot of different artificial intelligence projects. Earlier this summer, people were typing in a phrase and then getting an image generation. So for example, you could be like a panda holding a coffee and then get an image generated of it. And what was really cool about this AI image generation is that it was kind of using a ton of different resources on the internet in aggregate to create a new piece. I'm putting quotes around the word new because we're gonna get to later if it's actually new or if it's just kind of a refabrication. But generally the idea is very similar here, except now it's text generation. So with ChatGPT, you can do many different things from asking questions like you would ask on Google, like how do I make pancakes, for example, to much more nuanced things like tell me a story about someone that wasn't sure what to do with their life and then they figured out their passion. And over the last two days of me just being in the absolute rabbit hole with ChatGPT, I was wildly impressed with a lot of the answers. The answers are more impressive as you get more detailed. And Marquez actually talked about this in his video too. It feels more and more impressive the more complex your prompts are. And I think the reason is that when you're asking like a very simple question, there's a chance that the platform is gonna get it wrong and then that's not impressive. But when you ask like a much more nuanced, specific request and then it gets most of it right, it's more impressive. Before I get further into the requests I've asked and how I think it's actually going to be a utility for like creators and students and even just like the everyday person, I first just want to talk a little bit about how it actually works because I feel like a lot of people are sharing all these cool examples on the internet, it's taken over Twitter, but no one's really explaining like here's actually what's going on. And I think without that context, it's a little bit confusing and then also like mystifying how it's actually working. So ChatGPT is like a machine learning artificial intelligence program that works basically on on predicting what is going to come next in a sentence based on what's come previously. So it kind of uses like context plus statistics to figure out what's happening next. And it's built off two different things. The first is natural language processing or NLP for short. And NLP basically helps computers understand and generate language. So for example, if you type in a sentence, like let's say I loved Midnight's by Taylor Swift, it will segment each word within that sentence and segmenting it into like a simpler version. So instead of loved, maybe it will change it to love, like kind of reducing the word to its stem word. And then it will also kind of contextualize words that maybe don't need to be there. So the word by may get removed and then it converts each individual word into like a numerical system and then it starts learning how to process that. So the numerical system part is on the encoder side. So to get like super nuanced and niche and techie here just for a second, basically it's a transformer and there's an encoder side and a decoder side. And so the encoder side is kind of using the natural language processing and it's getting it all into numbers and stuff. And then you also have GPT and basically GPT takes the sentence and then gives an answer. And the way that it has learned this is through two different methods specifically for the GPT. And that is uh, supervised learning and reinforced learning. So if you're still with me here, which hopefully you are, reinforced learning is this algorithmic thing that OpenAI kind of helped develop. And it's basically the computer using everything available on the internet to learn things about like language and facts and just random details. And then supervised learning is basically training the AI. So helping the machine learning to figure out what the most relevant answers to different queries are. So for example, they would input a question and then four different answers would come out from the AI. And then humans, like actual people, would rank how good the answers are in comparison to each other. And that kind of helps the AI learn um, what a good answer is and what a bad answer is. And the reason why humans are obviously so vital to this process is that objectively something could be factually correct, but one answer may just sound a lot better than the other. And then also, of course, there is an element of like wanting to fact check it too. But one of the things with ChatGPT is that it is not always factually correct. In fact, actually Marquez in his video also mentioned that a lot of the time it gets at least one thing wrong but it sounds like it's very confident in itself. So you wouldn't necessarily know that it's gotten something wrong unless you're an expert on the topic. So for example, if you were a student and you had to write something about like pre-colonial America, but you didn't know anything about it, 
and then you use this to like write the essay, there's a really good chance that something in there would be wrong and you wouldn't know exactly what it is. Additionally, I feel like how much information there is available on the topic online also plays a role. And they stopped training this AI in 2021, so it's a predetermined AI, meaning that um, users interacting with it now doesn't make it any better. So that's a good thing in the fact that users interacting with it now and what people ask is not going to influence the AI um, and create like biases in a negative way. But it means also that if you ask it anything that's happened past 2021, it won't have any context or relevance to it. So the facts are going to be outdated. So once I learned all that, and I didn't know any of that before making this video, like the research for this video was genuinely fascinating. I felt so lit up learning all this new stuff. Once I learned that, a lot of the other stuff made sense. So as someone in their 20s, one of the first questions I asked the chatbot was, what advice would you give to someone in their 20s? And the answers that it gave were pretty generic. And it makes sense because it's kind of cultivating answers from all over the web and systematizing them into what it thinks the most relevant answer is, the most relevant information, and then kind of rephrasing it with its machine learning tools. But how much is it actually rephrasing it is really my question. And it's a question without a very clear answer, because if we look at Dolly from over the summer, a lot of the time artists, when they're making a piece, would put a little signature on their piece to kind of like claim it as their own. And so with the image generation, sometimes there would be some almost like artifacts of the signature on the piece. And that's because it's using part of that artistic piece in the new piece. So then it's like, how much of this image is actually new versus just like a remix? And then you kind of get into this big discussion of like intellectual property and what it counts as like fair use and inspiration and then what counts as like plagiarism. And what I think is really interesting about this is like, as a person, we all get inspired by things, right? So when I first started on my YouTube channel, my big inspirations were Marquez and Casey and TLD and all these other creators that were making videos. And so a lot of my first videos are very reminiscent of their styles because when you're first starting, you kind of need a place of inspiration to go to. And then eventually as you keep going, you craft your own style. You take little pieces of everyone's style and it kind of just becomes your own. I think that it's very different when a human is actively getting inspiration versus AI because AI doesn't have any feelings or emotions. Um, so when it's copying from someone, it's literally just taking directly from the data source. Whereas a human can kind of intangibly be like, oh, this made me feel like this. And that's why I like the color tone in the shot. I'm gonna try to replicate it in my own. And so I think that the two questions that have really been circulating the web right now are, is AI going to replace creators? I think the short answer to it is no, but I wanna get a little bit more nuanced on that in a second. But number two, is it plagiarism? Like, could you ask AI to write an email for you, a resume or an essay? and just submit it. And I think the ethical answer is that the chatbot should be used as kind of like a starting off point, inspiration versus the final submission. Also for your own good, because it does get things wrong sometimes. But I think that chatbot and ChatGPT is going to be incredible for getting idea generation. So I think that what I was saying to my friend when we were talking about this is that people are no longer gonna be limited by the hard skills that they have, but rather just by the ideas that they have. Because you can use chatbot GPT to help you write code, write an outline for something. And so really what it's going to come down to is like your will to get something into existence and then your ideas. And so my overall take on it is that I think it's really exciting. I'm definitely going to start integrating it into my creative process when I get stumped on ideas. And also just for the novelty of it, like sometimes it genuinely blows me away with what I ask. But things I will not be using it for, writing a full video script, writing a full email to someone, writing a podcast script, anything that really requires creative energy, I think that there's this intangible emotional element that we have as humans that we bring to projects that AI obviously can't copy. But this is a mind blowing situation. I definitely wanna like continue having the conversation. So let me know in the comments below. I honestly was just so inspired that I had to make this video. If you wanna see another video talking about big tech concepts actually with Sundar Pichai, you can click right here. Thank you so much for watching this one. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.